Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Grade 8 Coding. It is the 20... Oh, I made it typo. It's supposed to be the 22nd of July. But nonetheless, we are looking at Minecraft, which is always a lot of fun to do, even when I do get the date wrong. So excuse me for that. Right. My name is Mr. Paul de Klerk, and I am the Senior Face Coding Teacher with the STEM Digital School and I want to just welcome you all to the lesson and then also just tell anyone who might be viewing the YouTube uploads that if you'd want to come and join us here you can just go ahead and have a look at the video description box below there you will find the links that will lead you to our website and that is going to allow you to register now if you do feel a little bit confused, the links to the website are all labeled as Africa Teen Geeks. They are the people who are in charge of this school. They actually started the school. So just understand that if you do visit their website, right at the top in the center, you'll see there's a STEM Digital School tab that you can click on. Awesome. So this is going to be the last day we look at this quote, but I... I really like this quote, so that's why I repeated it three times, but I won't bore you with it again tomorrow. Although you do know that I believe, and it has been proven via studies, that um, repetition is the mother of all learning. So the more you see something like this, I'm hoping the better it will take hold somewhere within your um, thinking methods, if you want to call it that, right? What he basically says is, I knew that if I tried and failed, I wouldn't regret that. But I knew the one thing that I might regret is not trying. And this was said by Jeff Bezos, the Amazon founder and CEO. Okay. So again, I don't know whether he actually quotes uh, codes or not, but his quote is relevant to what we do. No, it's not. Our assessment will be on the 29th. Just check, yes, the 29th. So it's only next week, Friday. Okay. I see a bunch of you have now woken up and realized that you can greet. You can say hi while I'm doing these run-throughs here. Whoops. So here are some terms that we need to know. Conditionals. So you see, actually, when we jump back to the harvest, and I'll show you, there was a bit of a mix-up yesterday with the lessons. I don't know why that happened. But anyway, I think we're good to go. Um, if else logic statements that change the way that the code is executed. So it's the same thing, same statements that we would have used if we were just creating a sequence. But the conditional is now changing the way that it is executed. It is allowing the program to first inspect a certain condition and to find it either true or false before it decides if it is going to execute the code or not. Okay. The second one is a conditional loop. This is one that uh, or loops these repeat. No man, let me try that again. Repeats. So repeats. When I say they repeats, I'm talking about the repeat blocks. I should change that um, because that sentence trips me up each time repeats that execute while a condition is true or until a condition has been met okay so this is where we're at conditionals in minecraft puzzle 5 to 11 right So I don't know what really happened here yesterday, but I'm glad that we're doing this one and then that one because this one's a lot more fun, okay? So that one's also a lot of fun. It has a few ones that are quite a bit tricky, which makes it fun, okay? So this one we did yesterday, right? I'm going to share the link with you and I'm going to talk through this one. This is why I always review the last one we did the day before so that we can just well, I can offer you some time to to head over to the coding platform yourselves. Yeah. 
Awesome. So it says, let's feed the cod to the dolphin. Now, in the previous puzzle, we actually went and we caught a cod, which is not the actual way that you do it. In Minecraft, you can actually fish with a fishing rod and, and catch them. Also, if you are looking at building an aquarium in your house, my son and I, we did that the other day. Then you swim and you chase them with an iron bucket and then you can actually um, catch them in that. But anyway, for this purposes, we only had to be on top of where the cod was, right? They said the tropical fish, but let's leave him be. So now we just want to move the boat from there to there. So as we said yesterday, you used to have the ability and you actually still do have the ability to say, well, not now, I mean, coming in a later stage, and to say repeat how many times, right? We can actually type a number into that. So just because we've now learned how to use these, it doesn't nullify the other ones. The other ones that we, where we can put the numbers in, they're known as for loops, right? So you see this one says repeat until goal, and there's a function that is assigned there, right? Well, currently there's no function assigned, it's just saying function, but you can assign a function there. Um, so later on, we're going to get one that's called a for loop. Uh, that's what I want to show you. Where here it's going to say four and a few numbers and it gives you all, all different options. So there are actually situations where we're still going to use those ones. And especially the for loops, once they give you the ability to adjust everything that is adjustable within the loop, it becomes very, very powerful. I'll show that to you when we get there. Okay, but for now, we're just going to use this basic one. So this is a repeat until goal. And this is one that's going to say, okay, whatever we put inside here, we want you to do that until you have reached your goal. So here we can actually make Alex go in this square forever. Because the way we've coded it, Alex is never going to reach the goal. So unless there's some script that has been written to say, okay, time this out <laughs> so that this doesn't happen forever, then this should actually technically happen forever. But what we really want to do is just repeat the move forward until we get there. Okay. I just showed you that so that you understand it doesn't have to be only one thing that you place in there. Okay. Just need to start this one over. Oh, we are. There's a Nautilus shell hidden somewhere. Explore the shipwreck to reach the chest. So there's our shipwreck. Uh, well, there's our chest. Just do that for you. Okay. Right, so there's our chest. This is where we are. I actually want to check something. So all we need to do here is turn and swim, and that's going to keep on repeating. I want to see if we go left, whether that turtle is going to give us hassles. I've never tried swimming past them. Oh, it just moves the turtle out of the way. Okay. So I wanted to to go there before that turtle isn't there anymore. But okay, so you can access the chest from the back or probably the route that most people would have chosen is this way around. Okay. But what I hope you notice what's nice about this is, remember how we used to sort of sit here and then cut, oh, one, two, three, uh, I can't really see the blocks. And then someone in the chat says four times, another one says six times. And before you know it, we all have our own idea and our own opinions about how many times we have to repeat that loop. Where with this, we don't have to do that. It's going to automatically do what it is supposed to do until it's not needed anymore. Okay. Right, so looks freezing out there. Catch a salmon on your way to the underwater ruins. Mm -hmm. 
So this is where you are. That's where the salmon is. These are the blocks you have. You only have 10 to get there. So let's get cracking in our chat box. You tell me what to do and I will code that in on my side and together we can figure it out. So you just type in the chat box what you want me to do. Place this block, place that block, or you can write the entire code. Okay, so we're going to turn right and then move forward. Yes, 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 no problem. There you go. Please, 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 if you lose the link somewhere or you get disconnected or you accidentally click off, just ask me for it again, okay? I'm, I don't mind at all. You're welcome. Okay, so Natalie had an idea to come this way. So I'm just going to help her complete this part. So that's going to be one, two times. One, two, three times, right? So what we want to do is just do this. Otherwise, we're going to be using too many blocks. And we can test that, and that works. Then we want to obviously turn left and come up here all the way. One, two, three, four, five, six times. Again, we test it. Then we want to turn right and do that again. Yes, I can. Okay, so I just want to show you this. If you go up here, You're going to turn right and move forward again three times, but that code is already there. So let's see what will happen if we do this. Now, if I understand this correctly, it should not continue after this once the goal has been met, but let's just double check because it doesn't always, now oh, you see, keeps going now. So it leaves you in a situation where the only way to really do it this way is to do this again and do this and do that. Now you're still within 10 lines of code. So but there is another way that we can actually use this one that they have. So that's a good a good route to take. The one that I had in mind was to do this. Okay. And now you can see this is going to I missed this. As I was doing this, I knew I missed the block and then I forgot to put it in. There we go. Okay, so you can see that one also works, right? So this is all going to depend on you. I mean, here we're using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine blocks. Over here we're using one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks. 
So one is a little bit shorter than the other one, but at the end of the day, they both reach the same goal. And it's going to depend on what you really want to have displayed on your screen, okay? So maybe when you're coding a game, not specifically this puzzle, then you want him to follow a specific route for a reason, right? Whatever that reason might be. So then you are going to code it according to that. Okay. Just need to run it one more time so that we can choose to continue. Right. So now, here is the next step of this entire conditional idea. Using a conditional repeat with a conditional inside it, which is basically saying, we want you to move forward And as soon as the path to the right becomes available, we want you to turn right. And once you've done that, we want you to repeat until you've reached the goal. But you could also go the long way around. And there we go. Right. So they give you an allocation for seven blocks. So if you want to go this way, you're, you're free to do that but you can do it in five blocks. And then that's just going to going to be that little section there. Okay, so before I continue, I want to ask you, is this clear? Do you understand this idea of having a repeat and having a conditional inside the repeat? Even though it is a conditional repeat, you can still put another conditional inside it. Okay. Right, so that looks pretty cool. It seems like they have not tweaked the colors. Yesterday, these colors were a bit off. I think that's why they changed everything around. They were updating. There are also turtles now on these where there were, weren't any turtles before. Wasn't any turtles. Okay, so there we have it, the tropical fish. So I was confused when I said earlier we caught tropical fish. Maybe we did caught cod before we fed it to the dolphin, but we did it yesterday. So my memory all only stretches to a couple of hours ago and not more than that. I don't like to exert too much so, what I do know is we need to find that little fish. We need to navigate to it. So, I'm just going to share this link again just in case. Okay. So in the chat box, tell me what to do. Let 
Does anyone have any idea? Okay, so I'm going to pati patiently wait. You can even type block for block if you don't want to type the entire thing out. Okay, so there's a move forward. Oh, okay, repeat until goal, move forward seven times, move forward, repeat until goal, okay. So we're going to repeat until goal, move forward. Then we need to find a way to tell Alex to turn the boat before crashing into that block there. So how do we do that? Yes. We add this one in there and we say turn left. No, turn right, there we go. Right, and we've done it in five blocks out of the seven that we had available. Okay. So for those that might be a little bit lost, what we said here was we want to move forward and we want to keep moving forward until we've reached the goal. But we don't want to only move forward. We want to be able to turn right if there's a path to the right. But once this happens, the code is going to continue back into the sequence, which is repeating because of this. Okay. So does that make sense to everyone? Okay. Right, so this one becomes fun. Now we have these two new ones here. It says instead of checking for a path to the left or the right or something like of that sort. It's saying if you are on a blue coral, these blue blocks, so we can set that to do something. And if Alex is on a red block, you can set Alex to do something. And you can change this to sand or deep water or oak planks or sea lanterns, right? So this is one part of it, but it's not complete. I need to add two more blocks here to make this code complete. What two? 
should I add? Any ideas there? And move forward. Now we already have the move forward in there. So what we have there is the first sequence, the first part of the sequence. I need to add two more blocks into that repeat to finish this entire program, right? So you need to try and figure out what block is missing, if you want to call it that. Not just one, two. It's something inside something else. Okay, so we have this blue coral turn right. We need to add two more. It's very similar to the blue coral turn right. It's just the opposite. Yes, there we go. If standing on a red coral, turn left. And you should be able to see that. Even if you did only that and you ran the code, you could easily see, okay, that's working there. That's working there. But now you realize, ah, something's not right. So you, if you add this one, this is what happens. Okay, so there we go. So due to the fact that these if blocks, once that's run, they move on to continue down the sequence to run whatever's coming next or execute what, whatever's coming next, okay? excuse me, whatever block is next. So this will repeat this sequence over and over and over again until that has been done. So if you do this without that, you see what happens. You're only moving forward once because there's only one move forward block there. And if you put the move forward in, in the repeat by itself, just connect this. Now look at that. It's going to keep trying to move forward. Okay. So you must have all of this inside the loop because it runs in sequence. This one goes first, then this one, then this one. Now back to this one. 
and this one. But it doesn't jump from here back there. It jumps from here all the way around. But it's going to skip that, move forward when it is standing on one of those things, on a red or a, or a blue car. Okay, here's another one. There is a squid hiding somewhere in this ocean monument. Can you find it? So we can see it, I hope. This is where we are. That's where the squid is at. Let me just drop a link here so that we don't get lost. Again, it's open for you. Who can tell me where to do and what to do? Okay. Okay, repeat until gold move forward, yes. We actually only need two more blocks, then this entire thing is finished. Standing on a sea lantern, we're going to turn right, not left, but you get the idea. Right. Okay, so I just want to show you this one. This is a long way around, right? It feels like there's supposed to be a shorter way that you can just come here and turn and do your thing. The problem is though, once you're using this conditional, you need to have certain set um, trigger points on your play area, right? So there needs to be something to stop the move forward from happening and to trigger something else to start happening. So that's why we choose the sea lanterns and we do it that way. Because we need to have certain points to initiate this code to be executed. If you just did this, Obviously, it's going to swim into this wall. Okay, does that make sense to you? Okay, almost done, then we can continue. Right. Okay. So this one is saying build a wall of build a wall of prismarine around the black concrete. This will activate the conduit and complete your challenge. So there's the conduit. We need to build an entire wall around this. So again, we want to use the repeat until conduits complete. Obviously, a move forward and a place prismarine. But now, 
we have that same situation. This unknown or this condition, repeat until conduit completed, is going to remain false until we've done the whole thing. Okay. So we again need to find a way to trigger a turn to happen. Right, so there we have that on the sea lantern, we're turning right. So even though we're placing the prismarine on top of the sea lantern, we're still turning there because it, it doesn't go away. It's still on that position. Okay, now the conduit's complete. There is another way to do this. If we do this, no, it's not enough times, sorry. It's me not counting properly. But this is why I try to shy away from using these ones because then you have to actually be able to see all the lines clearly so that you can count exactly how many times you want to move or have to move. Okay. So we're done with Minecraft. Let's see how yeah, these bonus puzzles will do after the next lesson. So what I want to do is just jump into the harvesting lesson quick. This is going to be what we'll be doing from now. So, well, this is the next lesson at least. So just check here. Corn, you help me harvest today. So a little plan words there. Help the harvester check a row of corn to see if anything, <laughs> see if anything is ready to pick. Use conditionals to look at each sprout. Every stalk will have either zero or one piece of corn ready to harvest. Now this sentence, is of utmost importance, right? You need to always look for the sentence that tells you how many of what there will be. And I'll show you that in a second. If it doesn't tell you and you are unsure, you can run this without having entered any code and it will display how much or how many pieces of that one single piece of core, uh, crop there is and you can see it changes right so if you've done this about three or four times then you can see okay it's either going to be one or zero there won't be more than one for this puzzle so now you can use the repeat because you know there's one two three four five so you can say okay we want the repeat to move forward and then we want to say as well, if there is corn, we want you to pick corn. Okay. Right, so I'm going to continue here. Now it's saying, let us collect both crops from this row. 
Now what I want you to do is, I'm not going to give this one to you, but go and play with this thing. This one is a bit of a, a, a headache to work with. Okay, so this one has a few tricks up its sleeves, but what I need you to do is to go and practice using it and see what you can come up with. Especially take note of how this block acts when you are on an empty space like that, right? I'm not talking about on the crops, on an empty space like that. So what this is saying is if there is corn, do this, else do that. So this is saying if there is corn, you do this. If there is no corn, do this, but it's not saying to check for something else before executing this. So that's why I want you to play with this and go and test, see what it does on that, okay. Right, so tomorrow we'll continue with harvesting with conditionals. Thank you for being here. If you've got any questions, you can send it to my email there. You can find us searching for Africa Team Geeks on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Have an awesome afternoon. Bye-bye.